very much for the introduction and uh, uh, Salam alaikum everyone. Uh, my name is Amit Bunta, I'm a product of Morocco. Uh, I'm also proud to be an American citizen. I say proud because I think uh, I'm, I've always been told to live in Morocco or America, and I say, well, Morocco my parents, and America is my wife. You, you don't get to choose who your parents are, but you get to choose who your wife is. I, I mean, I hope, right? And um, <laughs> so, how did I end up where I am today? Uh, long story short, I went to school here, I went to private school, then I went to public school, high school, and middle school. And uh, I wasn't a good student, believe it or not. I was not getting good grades. I was actually a very terrible student. I, I, I apologize to my teachers from high school. Uh, and I think it's because I was different. I wasn't challenged. I was always critical. I'm the data guy, and I don't like to take data and keep it. I want to analyze it. So I was always the guy that was challenging you know, teachers. And like, well, that's not your job. My job is to teach you this. Go learn it by heart and come back. And I'm like, well, I don't think this is going to work. So uh, <laughs> being my parents always, also was very hard. Um, what happened is after I got my high school degree, I mean, I, I really struggled to get it, but I did. Uh, I was blessed to have a very good friend of mine who called me, and back then uh, AUL was in here, but there has been two good schools here in town also that you know, teaches using the American system. And he's like, hey man, you know, I'm signing up for this school, I think you should join. I was like, I want to speak English. He's like, I exactly will figure it out. So I went and I started studying there, and I think since day one, it changed my life. And it really did. And the reason is, and actually one of my teachers is here, Mr. Selmy, thank you so much for being such a inspiration. And the reason is, one of my first classes with Mr. Selmy, he really challenged me. He was like, well, this is black, and I'm like, no, it's gray, you know, you're going back and forth. And that's when I really realized that what we need here is to start letting our kids be different, be creative, be thinkers. If they get an F in math that doesn't make them stupid, maybe they're an A student or something else. So what we really need to do is let our kids think and also let them fail. Um, Mark Cuban is a very successful guy, and I, I'm very proud to have a partner uh, that actually knows him very well. And he always, and I get a chance to see him speak many times, and he said, once and I will always remember that you will fail a lot in your life, but people will always remember the one man. That one man that's gonna you know, make you unique. So keep failing, man. Keep failing. And that really is who I am. Like, I, yeah, and uh, quickly about my career, I worked for Microsoft, I was in worldwide. Uh, then I worked in fashion, go figure, I'm rocking by the Rachel and Fashion brand in New York, and that was just hilarious. Um, and from there, one of the board members of that company actually has a relationship with Alibaba, which is the largest e-commerce site on Earth. And even the guy's story, I highly recommend you all guys to go and read about Jack Ma, a true inspiration. That guy didn't get a minute for a job for Emma Collins, for God's sake. He's the richest guy in China today. And, you know, he's like, hey man, how do you feel about being the GM of this e-learning company that teaches Chinese to Americans and English to Chinese and Alibaba is giving you a chance for me to do that. I was like, sure, let's go and do it. So I was living in Dallas, working in California in Silicon Valley, and going to China. So I was really not living anywhere for, for a while. And what that taught me as well is that, I mean, think about it. actually what I got to do. So I came back through immigration, and at the time I was an American, so I entered with an American, and we're doing rock and passport, and the guy told me, okay, so wait, you live in Dallas, you work in Silicon Valley, you're a GM of a Chinese company, you don't speak Chinese. I was like, that's not suspicious. <laughs> so, uh, so, and that really hit me. It's like, we live in a world where globalization is here. And, the, and to answer one of your questions about what Morocco needs to do is teach your kids to code. Really, teach your kids to code. I mean, the, the next big thing is already here. I mean, we are, we're experiencing a crazy world. It's the rise of shared economy. The largest hospitality company in the world is Airbnb. The largest taxi company is Uber. I mean, they don't own any taxis, they don't own any hotels. So we're really in an economy of share. That would have been a Moroccan idea. It didn't have to be an American idea. Sure. It's, it's really as simple as that. We need to teach our kids to go. We need to teach our kids to think, to be creative, and really create an ecosystem that allows them, again, you can put everybody in one, one basket. If some, some kids, and they show it in a very, very early age, 
are creative, we are artists, so let them be artists. If you're a musician, be a musician, be a great one, just be great at whatever you're good at. And that's what we need to create in this country. And my advice really, if you want to really be a hub in the world, is we need to invest heavily in technology, in creating an ecosystem that allows people to be creative, to create apps, and to also teach them how to go and raise money. I don't think there's a single venture capital here in Morocco that supports startups. I'm not aware of any. Uh, and if they do, it's probably very, very small amounts. Uh, we need to teach them how to pitch their business. We need to create relationships with VCs in the US, in Europe, and wherever they are. There are a lot of people out there going in on looking for new disruptive ideas that can change the world. And they're willing to spend a lot of money for it. I've personally raised a lot of money for a lot of crazy ideas. Some didn't work, others didn't. But at least, you know, if you're pretty good at pitching, that's all that is, right? <laughs> so just to get to pitch nice products. Uh, and just to really close it here, um, what I really want to say is our system, whether I like it or not, is really broken. And it's great that now that your students need to learn English in order to, you know, you know, get a degree, but I think it's got to start when they're this level. To me, it's like, again, we're all again going back to starting to fix the system from the top and not really from the bottom. We need to start from the bottom. And not because I'm Moroccan American that, because that I'm asking you to learn English, it's just the reality. All the research are done in English. Everything that is happening, you could be in China and you're learning in English. You could be in Japan and you're learning in English. So that's just the reality. I don't think you guess French. Not at all, my sister lives there. But, you know, I don't, I don't really have anything against the French, but the reality is, if we want to be, uh, you know, a very attractive market, we need to educate our kids and have them and make sure that they know how to speak English. So thank you very much for your time.